So I'll go first. All right? Four. Come on, good push attack. Good enough. Okay. Good enough. Do you <laughs> think so? Talk you up. They didn't defeat Shredder with a bunch of hamsters. <laughs> All right. There you go. Nothing. Wolves. <laughs> Woo! Love it. Phoenix. That's yeah. much better than turtles. Penises are good. Uh, okay, I think I'll go. All right, here we go. Come on, large dragons. <laughs> oh, God. Almost. <laughs> mean, almost. Almost. Just... <laughs> All right, my turn, my turn. I right, don't go to, uh, I guess we can't get duplicates. Something good. Merfolk! Ah! Let's go! Ah! Ah! What? <laughs> How many arrows um, even are there? Uh, I think four. Yeah. Amigos, I can't wait to see Yamin's four Orox. <laughs> Actually, Carl, it's gonna be at least five because my commander is Morit of the Frost, which is a five mana Simic shapeshifter. That is also a changeling, so it has all creature types. So, it's an Arox. When it enters the battlefield, I can have it copy any permanent on the battlefield, and it will become a copy of that permanent, except it's also legendary and snow, and if it's a creature, it becomes a changeling with two plus one plus one counters, right? So it's basically a clone. So, as long as she's a creature, she's an Arox. Oh, okay, so you have to draw one of the four first. Maybe. Then you get a second. It Maybe. gets a friend. I'll find it. <laughs> all right. Uh, I brought, there's only, it, was, it wasn't very difficult, there's only one turtle commander, uh, and it's quite strong. I got turtles, so I'm playing Arculos, Lagoon, Mystic, which is probably his preferred way of saying it. So Arculos is really on theme for turtles, he's a 2-4, so he's bigger in the back, smaller in the front. If he's untapped, all permanents, everyone's permanents, enter the battlefield untapped. But if he's tapped, if he attacked for example, or crewed a vehicle, and then all the permanents that everyone owns, including myself, enter the battlefield tapped. I have to be careful. I don't want to get too annoying. But as Arculo says on his flavor text, life is not a race. <laughs> that's not all. <laughs> I didn't pose for effects. That's actually how you're supposed to read it. Todd, so, what did you bring? I brought da -da -da -da, Cyrix, Phoenix Lord. And as Phoenix do, it's all about getting stuff into the graveyard, out of the graveyard, and then dealing damage. So mainly when something comes out of my graveyard, it doesn't matter where or how, uh, it deals damage equal to the power of a phoenix at the end of turn, and also if a phoenix dies, I can cast him from my graveyard. So you see there's a lot of synergy between putting stuff into my graveyard and getting stuff out of my graveyard to deal lots of damages. Easy game. Perfect. Yeah, and uh, my commander is Atraxa. What? Okay. <laughs> that's the typical goat. That's not a goat. That's the goat. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the goat. Yeah, exactly. My deck is goat tokens. Well, goat fog, really, uh, because goats are really bad. And the only thing I can do with my deck is make goat tokens. So I needed something to kind of stall a little bit. Atraxa is the colors that I wanted to make the deck. So I don't really plan on casting it, but don't tell anybody. Makes goat tokens. And. Little else. Mm. <laughs> Can't right. wait to see how you win. Do you want to roll? Yes, yes, let's... I roll. Yeah, so same as usual, we roll. If we have the same number, we are excluded from going first. It doesn't matter what the number is. All right. And highest wins. All right, let's go. Five. So, Remy, you and I knock each other out. Okay. No, that's me. Yeah, but five wins anyway. Yeah, yeah, five wins. All right, draw your hands. My opening hand is not the best best, but we have some decent pieces to work with. We have a Braves of Fire, which is enormously good if we can make the mana use on our upkeep. But also we have some Phoenixes and the card I really, really wanted to play, the deck of many things. So I hope we're gonna get there and we're gonna do some awesome stuff. I will first decide to keep Well, this is exactly what I wanna see in an opening hand. I have a way to get my Spring Jack Pasture, which is basically my only way of making goat tokens. And a Howling Mine. More cards? Who doesn't like more cards? I'll keep this. My opening hand is just fine. It doesn't yet have an Aurox, but I do have a Lead the Stampede to help me dig deeper, and I, I think I should at some point find one. I do play some tutors for them, too. I'm... Yeah, I'm golden. My, the, the things I said didn't match up, but... <laughs> but I'm not golden. This hand isn't golden. This hand isn't golden. No, you're Yamin. 
Um, I'll keep as well. <laughs> I'm looking at the Wormfang turtle in my hand and realizing these cards aren't very good. All right, so because it's, this is Commander, what do you get to do now? <laughs> I always forget. All right, I will draw my card. By the way, if I'm starting to draw weirdly, I do have some miracles in my deck. So mm. Ooh. Um, sometimes, you know. All right, I'll start with a Canyon Slow and pass the trip. All right, I'll draw. I'll play a Temple of Mystery tap and scry one. Put that on the bottom and I'll pass the turn. I'll also take my draw. I will uh, play the worst tap land here at the table so far. Uh, it's it's around Wood Falls. It's just snowy. It's a snowy forest in Ireland. Go ahead, Carl. I'll draw. I will play a tapped breeding pool. And I like everyone's taking things very slow. This is the pace I was looking for with my <laughs> yeah. I like. How you played? <laughs> I, could, I considered speaking like this the whole video and they thought everyone would hate me. All right, I will play a swamp. Oh, look at that beautiful swamp. We'll get the engine going, right? I will play a Braid of Fire. So at my upkeep, this gets a counter and then I get a red mana for each counter. Oh, oh wow. That's scary. Yeah. So, but you can only use the mana during your upkeep. Exactly. Upkeep. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, I'll untap, draw, play planes. And my favorite commander card, Howling Mine. Whoa, <laughs> the game has just changed. Howling Mine is actually quite the insane card for me because I do want to draw a lot of cards. That also means I see a lot of phoenixes and I can discard them because maybe I have too many hand cards, but also I just draw a lot of more engine pieces. Howling Mine, love it. Howling Mine is great news for me because it helps me dig towards my hour oxus. Howling Mine has always been one of my favorite cards. Everybody gets more cards. Also in Commander, it's just kind of like a Maybe don't kill me because look, I'm giving you cards and it's a fun card. This is not actually that good for me. I play my cards really slowly. My lands into the battlefield tap. I cannot empty out my hand fast enough. All right, so I get to draw an extra card, right? At the beginning of each player's draw yep. step. If the mine is untapped, I draw an extra one. That's a lot of lands in my hand, cards in my hand. I gave something away here. <laughs> uh, now the issue is I, I can't play any of them. Um, the lands? I, I can't play a land, mm. but now I've got eight cards in my hand and I've got to discard. I'm gonna do that and discard an island. All right, I go. I'll draw. I'll draw oh, again. Okay, yes. So I'm gonna have to discard a lot. Uh, Cause I'll play this card oh, here oh, farm. Oh, oh. oh god. <laughs> I'll be <laughs> <laving laughs> back to my hand and I'll discard two. So I'll discard Harmonize, I don't feel like any of to draw anything and Freed from the Rail. And I'll pass the turn to Todd. All right, untap. In my upkeep, da, 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 da. you see, that's why you play. <laughs> <laughs> I will add a, uh, I think it's an H counter. Yeah, an H counter and get a red mana. And you think, what does he got to do with the red mana? Lightning bolt, cycle. Carl. <laughs> 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 I'm going to cycle Forgotten Cave. Used it. Wow. So I will draw one, two, three cards. That's not how cycling works. <laughs> <laughs> Draw step. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then in the flavor, I will tap three mana to cast a Hazard's Monument, which says my red spells cause one less to cast. Whenever I do cast a creature spell, I discard a card to draw a card. Go ahead. All right, I'll untap and draw two. Finally oh reaping the rewards of your own home. I hate that you mind. get to, you have to be the last to benefit <laughs> with this card. <laughs> Play an island, Chromatic Lantern. Lands I control have, I can tap to add one mana of any color and uh, I can use the lantern to add one mana of any color as well. And I will pass the turn. That's Ooh. some quality mana fixing. I'll take my first draw. I'll take my second draw. Ooh. I'll play a Myriad Landscape and because I need my mana, uh, for now I'll just pass the turn, which means I have to discard once again I'm gonna discard lead the stampede because that's just that's just more creatures. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Carl. I'll draw. I'll draw. Um, I will play an untapped land. I'll take two. I'll be the first to take blood, mm. and then I'll be the first to play a creature of my type. It's a Wormfang turtle. It's a creature nightmare beast. Believe it or not, when Wormfang turtle comes into play, <laughs> remove a land you control from the game. <laughs> what is that turtle? 
<laughs> oh man, Carl just set himself even further back than I did. Turtles take their time. <laughs> and when he leaves play, I can return it to play under my control and potentially take two again. So under the Wormfang Turtle will be my breeding pool. That's just broken, Carl. Yeah, how's, that, le how's that legal? <laughs> After the upside of having a three mana two four, I mean, <laughs> there has to be something to balance it out. Uh, I'll pass the turn to you. I'll keep. I will add a counter to my Braid of Fire, but unfortunately this time I'm not doing anything with it. So I will draw for the Holy Mine, and I will draw for the draw step. I will play a Takenuma and then tap the one black mana. I mean, what could you tap a black mana for? Uh, for a nice soaring. Yeah. Exactly. But, I mean, to be fair, we're not going to use that soaring for anything big. It's just an arcane signet. And then we tap the signet and one of the lands for my commander. Do -do 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 -do. Which costs one less because I have a hazardous tournament. But also, if I cast a creature spell, I do discard a card. By the amount of words that Toffel has been saying this turn, I feel like he's pretty far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, <feel that> well. <laughs> I would discard a Phoenix, who would have uh, thought, which uh, for a four mana I can return from my graveyard to my hand and draw a card. Oh, it is haste. <laughs> mm. My sentiment remains. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I will dunk Remy for three damage. I have uh, no creatures and uh, few cards, so I will take the damage. Accept it. Oh, so right. you take three, you go to 37, and you take three commander damage. I need some goats. <laughs> <laughs> Do they fly? Yeah, I really hope your goats fly. Oh, <laughs> that's a problem. All right, go ahead. I'll untap and draw for my Howling Mine and for my turn. I'll play a forest. Tap two to play a Sylvan Scrying. Search your library for a land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. All right, and I will get a Spring Jack Pasture to put into my hand. I can tap it to add one colorless mana to my mana pool. I can tap four mana and tap it to put a zero one white goat creature token onto the battlefield. Finally, we got there. <laughs> and I can also tap it and sacrifice X goats to add X mana of any one color to my mana pool. I would also gain X life. I mean, that's a way to generate goats. <laughs> and one of my only ways of generating goats. So uh, I will be finished with my turn after that. All right, at the end of turn, I'll sacrifice my myriad landscape to grab two forests. And with that additional mana, I'll head into my turn, which now is looking very mighty. Oh, maybe not, but maybe the second draw of the Howling Mind will... Nope, didn't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, actually, this is exciting. I will play an island, <laughs> and I will tap five to cast Reflection of Lejara. As Reflection of Lejara enters the battlefield, I choose a creature type, and whenever I cast a spell of the chosen type, copy that spell. So I will choose Arox. <sighs> Are <laughs> oh, you going to choose goats? And whenever I cast an Aurox going forward, I will copy that spell. And remember that copies of creature spells are actually just tokens. Hmm. Go ahead, Carl. I'll untap. I will draw. I will draw again. Do I have anything even good? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I could play something for four minutes, but wait, <laughs> somehow my land was gone. Yeah. That turtle is such a <laughs> disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that turtle is going to hit Taral for two. From the cycle of all of those turtles, this is actually one of the least annoying ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hit me. I'll pay two for a Kappa Tech Wrecker. It is also a turtle. It's a ninja as well. This one has a better job. It is better than the other one. It enters the battlefield with a Death Touch counter on it. And whenever uh, it deals combat damage to a player, I can remove the Death Touch counter and then exile target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Do you find this convincing enough? as a death touch. Yeah, it is very death touchy. Oh, that is <laughs> perfect. It's terrifying. Uh, so I'll do that, and then I know it's not a turtle, but she kind of looks like she'd get along with turtles. It's a Sakura Trap Scout. Uh, she's a 1-1. One -one. Uh, she's not a turtle, but she's a snake. You know, they, they get along, yeah, hopefully. So same. Yeah. Same thing, same, exactly. same section of the zoo. <laughs> I mean, a turtle is just a snake with some protection. Buffer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if I tap her, I put a land into play, because I, I do need that help. It's very strong with holding mine. <laughs> yes, I'll pass the turn to you, Todd. All right, we'll untap 
I'm gonna add a third red mana. Are you gonna do anything with it? Oh, absolutely. I will tap one additional mana. So I have four mana, and I will use the ability of the fire keys to return to my hand. That will, at the end of the, uh, their turn, trigger the Cyrix because something left the graveyard. All right, draw one, draw two. All right, first we attack, and I think mm, Carl looks <laughs> because of the insurmountable lead I took with his turn. <laughs> yeah. I'll play a mountain and a deck of many things. Uh, That's a lot of text, Topple. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. for wow. two mana, I roll a d20. And then I subtract the number of cards in my hand. If my result is zero or less, meaning I rolled something that is small or equal to my hand size, yeah. I discard my hand. Obviously, if you're discarding your hand, usually that's a bad thing. But this time it's actually a thing we quite enjoy because all of the phoenixes go to the graveyard. So that means we get them back anyway. And we have the shot to do even greater things by drawing more cards and getting stuff from the graveyard. Basically, any outcome is an upside. If I roll a one or nine, I return a card from my graveyard randomly to my hand. So right now it would probably be okay. But mm. For a 10 to 19, I draw two cards, which I mean, can never have enough cards. And for 20, I put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under my control. And when that creature dies, its owner loses the game. Oh, <laughs> all <Wow>. right. <laughs> so we're really hoping for 20. <laughs> I like this deck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, You're not going to like it for very long. Well, <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, it's your turn. End of turn, sorry. Uh, my Phoenix from the upkeep return triggers and it's gonna shoot the kappa. Why? Kappa. That is mean. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, my port. I drew this. <laughs> <laughs> I no respect for my art. You also drew this, but it's still. That, I did draw it. Oh. <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> Yamin, there's two of you. <laughs> I believe it's your turn, Ruby. This is why it's nice to not have any creatures. Nothing to, nothing yeah, exactly. to kill. Yeah, exactly. Time's life gives you silver linings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll untap, draw for Howling Mine, and draw for my turn. I will play my spring, back, oops, spring Jack Pasture that I drew last turn. And I will also play an Anointed Procession. Ooh. There's gonna be so many goats. <laughs> if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. Anointed Procession works really well with Spring Jack Pasture because now instead of one goats, I will have two goats, like Noah. I will be finished with my turn. Awesome, that means it's my turn. I'll untap, and I'll take my first draw, I'll take my second draw. I've got something exciting uh, coming up. Mm -hmm. Is it an Auroch? It, it, it partly is. I'm so hyped for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's like 25% of his Aurochs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tap five. It's the progress bar. <laughs> 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 and I'll cast my commander. Wait, how is that exciting? Wait, it's, it's an Arok. Now, we'll get to the exciting part. Okay. This is an Arok. It'll get copied. Now, the copy resolves first. And uh, the copy will... Uh, I can choose any permanent on the battlefield. I'll choose a snow-covered forest. Right? The, uh, this is a forest. This one enters the battlefield as another copy of any permanent I control, which I will choose the reflection of... Lidjara. So this is now a snow-covered legendary Reflections of Lidjara. Now, I've got two copies of Reflections of Lidjara <laughs> and what an What the bastest part. thing could you copy? <laughs> <laughs> I'll cast a Bull R. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> there's two <laughs> Reflections of Lidjara. I need two copy tokens. Now, the Bull Arox is a mighty creature. <laughs> it's a 2 1 trample, and when it attacks, it gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn for each other attacking Arox. <laughs> well, you've got three of them. <laughs> I've got three of them. Those are the slightly better goats. <laughs> Move. Um, I'll untap. I'll draw two times for the Howling Mine. Thank you, Remy. I'm going to play a Jungle Basin, which is like the Golgari Runt Farm, but worse because the taps are colorless and green, and I have to return the forest to my head, I'm gonna float with green. I'll play a soul ring with it. Ooh. Not bad, not bad. You also deprived yourself from the only blue you have? That is correct. <laughs> 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 that is correct. <laughs> you know Does how they someone say want to do the honors of killing the turtle? <laughs> 
I can't. I'll play four, uh, two with the Soul Ring, two with the Gold Gallery Rock Farm, to play a door of Destinies. What's behind it? Destiny and Turtles, probably. <laughs> um, as Dark Destinies enters the battlefield, I'll choose a creature type. It will be Turtle. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, put a charge counter on Dark Destinies. Creatures you control with the chosen type get plus one, plus one for each charge counter Dark Destinies, so my Turtles get better and better. Imagine this as a 3-5. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> and then I will, just because I'll do it in my turn, I will tap my uh, Sakura tribe person to put a thriving grab into play tapped and only my color and only blue. I feel like I should attack Toph just because he's terrifying everyone. Yeah, it's very and scary it, over there. I am and actually has a board now. Uh, Toph, I'll attack you for two. All right, in response, I will activate the deck of many things. And just saying, if if I roll a 20, I think you're dead. Mm -hmm. These are more powerful effects than Goat Toph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's roll it. Six. Oh, Minus. All my cards are gone. Uh, I, I accept your three damage proposal. It's two. That's not a it's not a 3-5 ah, yet, it doesn't yes, yeah, yeah, I need to play more turtles. Oh. Uh, no, 36. You, you can't just Sorry. buff all creatures. <laughs> <laughs> that, would <be> <laughs> that would be too fast. <laughs> okay. And I'll pass it to you. All right, uh, I will untap and, I mean, this, this could be the most exciting part. All right, we'll use the deck of many things. Now I actually can fail, which is great. Oh, come on, 20. Whee. Oh, no. have us 20. What happens in 10? Draw two cards. That's pretty good. All right, draw one. Ooh. Oh, is it a miracle? So yes, I, I will. This is the card I drew first, and it is actually a miracle. Um, let me see. I have three creatures. Just surprisingly, <laughs> luckily, enter the graveyard from a random effect. So, uh, since I have two left from the thing, I will pay two and one more, and I will uh, put all those into the battlefield. Normally, it would cost X, X, black, 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 but that sounds really annoying, you know? But since I drew it as my first card, it costs only black, black, X. That's wild. Jip, jip, jip. Doink, doink, doink. You see how upkeeps are very fun? Yeah. That is and now, you start even... your turn by drawing two more cards. Right, two more cards. One, two. Maybe those cards will allow you to get ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, my friend. Yes? <laughs> Look, we're good, right? I, I think you might need a little bit in, incentive. In, uh, incentive to do what? So I will cast Fervent Mastery. You may pay Fervent Mastery for two red, red instead of three red. If two red, red was paid, an opponent discards any number of cards, then draws that many cards. I can do that. You can do that right now. Oh. So yeah. I just do that now? Because I, I have a card called Meditate that I don't really want. Because uh, it, it reads, skip your next turn, <laughs> draw four cards, and I feel like we're trying Very to flavorful, <laughs> though. What I can do is very flavorful. Uh, so I'll get rid of that and draw a card. Yes. Uh, now come, we come to the actual card. I will look through my library and get three cards, and then discard three cards. Mm. Well, Talaf is really popping off. He's on fire. Like a phoenix. I mean, that's got to be one of the top five up keys in the whole history of time. So I got three cards. Now okay. they go into my hand. And, and we each get to pick one. To yes! Oh, yay. yay! Involvement. All right, you pick one. This one. Oh, a phoenix that comes back <laughs> from the grave. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pick this one. Rude. I'll take this one here. Ah, oh, a phoenix that comes <laughs> back from the so grave. So I suggest we form a gate watch. Yes. All right, this was fun. And now we are gonna do uh, some attacking. And I feel like Jamin, that's too much. So the Gatewatch do, needs to act. Do, do you feel like making an oath now? <laughs> right. uh, I guess I'll just take six. You take six, exactly. At the end of turn, since a creature came back from the graveyard, this phoenix will shoot four damage to the original Arax. I need it in the graveyard, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? No, I'm sorry. Did I say that right? I'm sorry. <laughs> the Aurochs? <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> All right, good. 25% of the Aurochs in his deck. <laughs> <laughs> well, untap, draw from my Howling Mine, and draw for turn. I'll play a Sandstep Citadel tapped. And I will play a Springjack Shepherd. When Springjack Shepherd comes into play, put a 0-1 white goat creature token into play for each white mana symbol in the mana cost of permanence you control. So I have 
two white mana symbols, but I also have this anointed procession, so I'm not a math major, but I think <laughs> I get four goats? Actually, Remy, uh, we heard you're making goat tokens, so I have this, I hope you're making a lot of them, <laughs> you have this huge pile of custom card market goat tokens. Three to use. Oh, these are awesome. I will put four zero one white goat tokens into play, and that will be my turn. Awesome. All right, uh, I'll take my first drop. And what comes after first breakfast? Second breakfast. <laughs> I'll start off my turn by playing a snow-covered forest, and then I'll tap two of those to cast three visits, which lets me search for a forest card and put it onto the battlefield untapped. And then I will cast a mighty universal automaton, which conveniently is an hour ox. <laughs> so I get two copies of it. Toffold's board is getting a bit out of hand here, so I think I'm gonna take this turn easy and keep up Sublime Epiphany to potentially keep stuff that Toffel does in check. And that's my turn. That was a good turn. <laughs> you made a lot of auras. <laughs> I mean, now you officially have more turtles than Carl. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm playing the turtle deck. I'll draw two cards. I will play a better turtle. I will play two and one green, one colorless floating. I'll play a Hexbind Turtlars. It's a three mana, three two, ward two. So don't go targeting it unless you've got two mana. And it's one of those cool new turtles with endless. Mm. Uh, so as his creature attacks, I can tap a non-attacking creature. You control because most of my non-attackers are turtles. They're chill. That doesn't have summoning sickness. And when you do, add this power to this creature's power. And turtles are a knock-in because uh, they can't open it because they don't have opposable thumbs. So I get a t uh, token on Dota Dun Nothingness, and then I'll use that floating mana, the floating colorless mana, is that blue, black, and green. Da -da 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 -da. And I will cast Archelos, Lagoon Mystic. So as right. it's currently untapped, other permanents enter the battlefield untapped. You're welcome. Thank you. Because that ever comes up. Uh, and I also get another counter on the door to the door of destinies, meaning all my turtles are way bigger than they were before. So I need to get the oath going. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm sorry, maybe I zone out for it. What is the oath? So you know of Nickel Bolas? It's you right now. <laughs> uh, kind of. I'll attack you with a 4-6. 4-6? <laughs> <Four six. laughs> it got there. <laughs> um, ow? 4-6. I got a 32, yes. And I'll play 4 the past 3. I know I'm not doing as much as Talal, but I'm proud of what I accomplished. All right, I will untap. In my upkeep, I will add a fifth mana from Buried and return the color of Phoenix because I do actually have Metalcraft. One, two, three, four, oh. four mana. You know what? I'm gonna build my own gatewatch with Blackjack and Phoenixes. Well, maybe not Blackjack. I squint and I look like I'm reading Toroff's cards, uh, like I know what they do. I don't know what they do. I will tap two, five mana oh, for a Cauldron of Souls. For tapping, I can choose X creatures, well, any number, not X, and they have persist until the end of turn. Meaning if they die, they come back with a minus one, minus one. Hmm. E will play a swamp, and then I will go move to attacks, and in attacks, I will trigger one of the phoenixes. If I had the beginning of combat, I have a creature with power four or more, I can pay one red and pour them onto the battlefield. Great stuff. Pretty good. So now we actually do have to be a little bit afraid of all the other shenanigans, right? Because you all mean harm. <laughs> have you seen his five creatures that collectively have one power? Okay, to be fair, he doesn't mean harm. <laughs> you know what? It's gonna be German. Oh, okay. Hmm. Take three. All right. I can see how we're coming off a little bit of strong here. I mean, our start was basically perfect, you know, but. I hope they're not overreacting because they do actually do a lot of crazy damage. So I, we have to turn it down a little and hopefully don't hold a grudge against us for a longer period of time. At the end of turn, I feel I need to punish. Uh, not the hour oxes. Well, how committed do you feel to your gatewatch? <laughs> <laughs> Look, you both of you think of a number between one and 10, how committed you are to the gatewatch. And then at three, you scream at the same time. Okay. One, two, three. Ten. Ten. I'm a troll. <laughs> <laughs> but it was ten. <laughs> All right. By your action, I'm sorry, Jeremy. They decided that your goat takes. On this, this goat? No, no, this goat. This goat? Yeah. 
Like, actually, it's not a goal. It's okay. I, I, I don't care that much for this. <laughs> <laughs> Just because they both said 10. It was not my fault. It was no, 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 that makes <laughs> sense. Look how happy they are. Yeah. As long as these goats are cool, look how colorful they are. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, I'll untap, draw for uh, my Howling Mine, and draw for turn. I'll play a forest. <laughs> and I will pass the turn. But before I do, I will discard an island. Oh, what is happening? Uh, this is wild. Um, at end of turn, I feel like I have to use this. This is not very efficient, but it is very mana efficient. Um, I will cast Sublime Epiphany. Ooh. I'll return the Braids of Fire to Toffled's hand. Wait, permanent? And I will create a copy of my Hour Ox. <laughs> 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 and I will draw a card. Unless someone else really wants to draw extra cards. <laughs> All, right. All right, that braid goes to my hand. It had a good time. And here's another hour ox. I'll untap. And I'll take my draw. All right, I've, got, I've, I've found something awesome in my deck that I wasn't even fully aware of. I'll play Sanctum of Eternity. And now Sanctum of Eternity is a land that lets me return my commander from the battlefield to my hand, which I can only activate during my turn. So I can start creating more cool stuff. I need to, you know, get get the board going even more. So I will cast an Altered Ego. Now, Ooh. this one is a spicy one. This one enters the battlefield as the copy of any creature on the battlefield, right? There's tons to choose from. And it can't be countered, and it would enter with additional plus one, plus one counters if I paid additional mana, but I didn't, obviously. I'll have it enter as a copy of an Hour Ox. Let's, <laughs> let's be real. And uh, actually, before it enters, I. This was my entire plan. Uh, I will cast Double Major, which lets me copy target creature spell I control. <laughs> so now this copy is an Altered Ego, which enters as an Arox. And then this is an actual Altered Ego, which also enters as an Arox. And holding my promise to the Gatewatch, I will attack with all my current hour oxes. I have a simple and easy question. Yeah. How big are your creatures? <laughs> <laughs> now these are all one one trampled, right? These don't do anything. Uh, not even trampled. These are just one ones because uh -huh. they're automatons. Uh -huh. Now these are two one trampled that get plus six plus zero, so they're eight one trampled. That's, That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I will block. <laughs> uh, I will... Oh. So all of those block the Arox. Hmm. And those two block... Two automatons? One, two automatons. Yes. All right. Yeah, that sounds fair. Before damage, I would like to give all of the Arox Phoenixes... I mean, just... You know what? We're just going to give everybody who says, those ones, this one, this one, and even... No. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so how much toughness is that? That's 10 toughness on the hour axis. So yeah. that's, uh, these are... 7-1, we said? 8-1. 8-1. 8-1, so 24, 24 minus 10, 10 yeah. 14? So I take 14 and go to 18. Uh, so I take one more from... 1 out of 1-1, oh, one, yeah. I go to 17. 17. Yes, and then all three of them die and come back with a minus 1, minus 1 counter. Well, um, this was the Arox initiative within the Gatewatch. So remember this day and celebrate it or something, because it's not going to be that good ever again. <laughs> <laughs> it was the day, the uh, hour to Arox. Um, I've, got, I've got one more thing left to do during my turn, which uh, is the final hurrah for the Auroxes. Here's a gleeful sabotage. I may destroy target artifact or enchantment. I'll pick the... Cauldron of Souls, and then I can conspire, not I conspire, the Hour Oxes, <laughs> they conspire. <laughs> because I think both of these have the same creature type. I can tap these two, and uh, the Hazard's Monument. Couldn't you just destroy this, please? No, that's turtles, though. Yeah, but they become enormous. You, you, can, you can have your pick uh, with the Arcane Signet, the Hazard's Monument, or the Soul Ring. Mm. Yeah, we'll go with the Arcane Signet then. Uh, and my final hooray is a rampant growth. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Which gets me an island. 
Hooray. Hooray! <laughs> Everybody likes an island. Go ahead. Uh, end of turn, I'll just put this uh, secluded courtyard into play, which I realized I should have played before. I pick turtle. And when I play one, I get this cry? No. <laughs> I don't. You just get to it. At the end of turn, since something entered from my battlefield, uh, from my graveyard, or left my graveyard, I may shoot three damage and it's gonna be to one of your aura ox. <laughs> Which one do you want? Do you want the original altered the copy, ego please. or the copy? <laughs> I'll untap. I'll draw two. Because after all that eventfulness, <laughs> uh, we do have a Howling Mine in play. How do I kill Todd? Why, why, why is this? <laughs> I, I don't know. I like this about Commander. It's like somebody like gets ahead and then just becomes the target for the remainder of the game. <laughs> and you or until it even back and plays some goats. That's what's liberating goats, about you know? playing zero one goat tokens. <laughs> what are your hand cards even doing? <laughs> 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 it's a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, I, I know they kind of forced you into like the role. You can also stand with like the good people. Call Phoenixes me. like goats in what, a certain what you, way. You want to borrow a goat? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Are these a currency now? <laughs> I'll play it for us. Yes. I just think they're getting ahead of themselves, you know? <laughs> I'll, I'll attack with my goats next time. <laughs> I'm truly getting ahead of myself. <laughs> it's like there's a whole battlefield of things going on, and in the corner is just man, <laughs> and just a goat eating some grass. <laughs> yes, Carl. What are you gonna do? Um, I mean, if I'm playing some turtles, I'll play one, two, three, four, five. I'll play five and leave a floating colorless mana to play a Thunderous Snapper. Uh, whenever I cast a spell of converted mana cost five or greater, I draw a card, and it's a 4-4, and it triggers my door. Finally, you so, get to draw some cards. And I'll use that floating mana, and this, tapping for turtle. Yeah, it works. To play a Simple Blind Snapper, which is a six mana, six, six, and what do you get for all that power? Well, it can't attack unless you cast a non-creature spell this turn. My cards are very powerful, uh, but, they all have, oh, and I draw a card, thank you very much. And now I, I need to do my part for the gate watch. So I will attack you with. Um, <laughs> Why was there a spot in the gate watch? You know, it's like. Wormfang Turtle. I'll keep watch. Uh, Arculus Lagoon Mystic, so now your permanent center of the battlefield tap. So I'll attack you with the uh, Hexbane Turtus, and uh, that's all I can, because the snake is a one. Wait, and they all have plus six plus six? Yeah? Plus four plus four. I mean, yes. So it's a six, eight. Six, eight, and a seven, six. You know what? Before, I will use my deck of many things and see what Yes, the deck <laughs> of many things. Hopefully I have to discard my hand. Yeah. All right, let's see. 18. 18. Minus three. That's so lucky you didn't use up the 20 yet. <laughs> <laughs> Death's draw two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we're just gonna block three things. All right, I block Phoenix here, Phoenix there, and more Phoenix this. Because, you know, they really like dying. So you take no damage, but your Phoenixes, I assume, die unless your you Your turtles are very efficient against my fire creatures. And uh, that is my uh, thing for the gate. Watch, I'll just play this forest. Did I play land? I'm just going to put it in with this. Makes sense. Uh, just in case. Just it enters tapped, though. Yeah, it enters tapped. Everything is tapped. <gasps> it's your turn. Honestly, if you fill out the application form, I we might just we might just let you join the gatewatch. Okay, what do I have to do? I start with untapping. If you just promise to activate the deck of cards like every turn, I'm fine with that. Like that's enough for me. That was easy. Welcome to, to the gatewatch. Welcome to the gatewatch. <laughs> I'll draw a card. You draw and, two actually. and howling mine. Mm-hmm. And I draw another one. I will play a Cathartic Union, discarding a Phoenix of Ash. And a Freight of Fire, because I don't think that's going to go. And we draw three. One, two, three. I will tap four, play a Phoenix. That triggers the Hazard. I will discard a Practice Signet and draw a card. Flying. When Mamma Phoenix is put onto the graveyard from the battlefield, deals two damage to each creature and each player. Oh. And Ooh. for five mana, it can return to my hand. Wait. Oh no, the goats. <laughs> <laughs> this <is> magma phoenix. <laughs> uh, oh no! <laughs> they enter the battlefield tap though. I guess. 
Oh, also the lands. They're gonna tapped. And you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Mm, I will also cast a Bitter Reunion, which enters the battlefield tap. And I discard a card. Mm. Mm. Draw and pass the turn. Uh, at the end of your turn, I will use my Spring Jack Pasture to put in a goat token. And with my anointed procession, I will have an extra goat come into play as well. Unfortunately, <gasps> yes, they do come into play time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I don't get the goat token. No, <laughs> no, no. It would be so sad. That's all you came here to do. Uh, I will untap. And draw for Howling Mind and turn. I will play a Felidar Retreat. Has landfall. When a land enters the battlefield under my control, I can choose one. I can create a 2 2 white cat beast creature token. Or, more relevantly, I can put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature I control. Oh, the, here we go. And those creatures will gain vigilance until oh, end wow. of turn. Unfortunately, <gasps> that enters town. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is that you just told me that it was going to enter town. <laughs> I still forgot. Uh, I will play a land for turn. Ooh. Will, uh, allow me to put... <laughs> Hey, I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so <told you. laughs> This is great. <laughs> and I will play a Commander Sphere as well. <gasps> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn is me. And since these have Vigilance, I'm going to go ahead and attack you with uh, all of them. Six the Gatewatch. The, the Arox. The, 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 the king. This is a compliment to the power of the Arox. Because <laughs> I know that they were going to defeat me. Is it my turn? Yes. <laughs> I'll draw one. I'll draw two. Now, the unfortunate thing is, all my original Aroxes are gone. I cannot copy any Aroxes anymore. Because if I copy this, then it's just... This. Ah, <laughs> you have to find a new herd. I have to find a new <laughs> herd. And you know what you need to find a new herd? It's a migration path. Oh, Ooh. very good. I'll get myself two basics. <laughs> you have an hour ox land? I, in fact, do not have an hour ox land. I only have two islands. I will tap three and cast a glass pool mimic. Mm -hmm. Now, this glass pool mimic will copy the altered ego because it can only copy creatures that I control. But the Altered Ego can copy any creature on the battlefield. And with that, I will copy um, the... <laughs> That's presumptuous of me. It does say any creature. I, I guess I'll copy Toffold's commander. Mm, good choice. That's yeah, may, maybe a creature will leave my graveyard yes. one way or the other. Unfortunately. And I just have, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> uh, last but not least, I will return my commander to my hand from the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So only one reflection remains, but that's not too bad because I have plenty of time to find another hour ox. <laughs> Go ahead, Carl. I will untap. Permanence, enter the battlefield untapped again. I'll draw two cards. So I have to play a non-creature spell for this to attack, so we'll start with that. I'll play in Urban Evolution. I like that card. It, it, it's a nice card. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in the art, but on the card it says I draw three cards, and I can play an additional land this turn. And finally, I found, a, I found a good use for Arculus, because I'm going to play a Lotus Field. When it enters the battlefield, I have to sacrifice two lands, but it also has Hexproof and taps to add for three mana of any color. It's beautiful. Combo. Okay. Then I'll tap it for three blue, because I need some blue. And one green. I'm going to play a Gross Pile, allowing me to draw, and then play an additional land this turn. And then I'll play my extra lands for the turn, which is a Forest and an Iron. And I still have two floating green, so I'll use that and one to play a Whisper Soul Cloak. Oh, that. An equipped creature can't be blocked and has Shroud. I'm going to equip it to my 6-6, six, six, which is actually a 10-10. Those are some big turtles now. I know, they're yeah, pretty big now. That looks fun. Declare my attackers. Todd? I know you've joined the Gatewatch. <laughs> but we're all in the Gatewatch, so it's kind of awkward. I do have to pick someone, and you are the scariest member. <laughs> Randomly. Uh, I'm going to attack you with this turtle. Also this turtle. Uh, also this turtle. Also this one, it, I don't mind if you kill it, because I get my land back. This one has Shroud, and you can't block it. Do I get in with the snake? I'll get in with 
right. at least one snack already got in. Uh, you're right. Uh, I will block. I cannot block the 1010. So I block the biggest one, which is this, this, and whatever this is. Boom. Uh, Tarif, so you get hit by this six power creature, this 10 power creature, and the snake. That's 17 damage. How much are you at? Mm, 17. I know it hurts. I'm so sorry. I know you're in the gatewatch, but I like the poetic justice of Yamin being the only one with a phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> they will rise <laughs> out of the ashes. Well, unfortunately, yeah, the oath of the gatewatch was too strong for me. My little phoenix birdies didn't make the way, but I mean, at least my commander lives on onto the battlefield. And uh, I'll pass the turn to Remy. Mm. I'll untap, draw two cards. Play a migration path. Mm, oh, that's a oh. good one, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's two triggers on all of the goats. And I'll get two oh. triggers. I'll get an island and a plains that will enter tapped and will give me two triggers for my Felidar retreat, which is actually untapped now. <laughs> uh, and I will put two counters on all my goats. And I will also play growing ranks. So, at the beginning of my upkeep, populate. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be the... Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Oh. I have to attack, I have to attack. Uh, <laughs> it's how central it is to my mind to attack. Vigilance is very strong. Yeah, <laughs> vigilance is awesome on that You card. know what? I think I have an even number of goats, right? You do. Okay, I will attack... Uh, each of you with three goats. A whole bunch of life. And that will be the end of my turn. All right, I better draw something good because my hand is Garbo. I'll untap. I'll take my draw. Now, I don't know exactly where this will go, but I will um, cast my commander again, which gets copied. Um, now, the copy will be a reflection of Lit Jara, which will name Shapeshifter this time around. I, I don't have any, any Auroxes, please don't be mad. <laughs> the uh, actual commander will become... There's no great creatures. Um, I guess it'll just become a land. It's oh, another snow cover. Times are dire. Yeah, they are. Then I will cast a clever impersonator, which will get copied because it's a shapeshifter. And it'll be a copy of the reflections. And that copy will name Shapeshifter 2. And then the original <laughs> will also be a reflection and name Shapeshifter. <laughs> Nothing is happening but so many words are being said. Um, so this is Shapeshifter 3. Yeah, these, are, these three are all Shapeshifters and this one is Aurox. This one is Legendary in Snow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll play land. Unfortunately. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the land <laughs> the then I will return my commander to my hand. Cast? <laughs> so sad and so sad. <laughs> I'll draw two cards. Oh, I feel so bad breaking the oath, but Yamin had such a bad turn, and Remy's goats are getting pretty bad. Okay, Remy, I know we're part of the same oath uh, and gatewatch, but this is a turn you'll have to start facing the turtles. The goats? Uh, you gonna attack the goats? I'm gonna attack straight into the goats, actually. And in a show of unity, I'm going to cast a wild shape and turn my snake into a 1-3 turtle with that group. That's so strong. That's such a power it's move. Broken. <laughs> yes, but now they're all turtles. And I will attack you with all of my turtles. So you're currently facing down 42 damage? No blocks. What? Yep, yeah, I mean, that's 40, <laughs> 42 damage. I have Druid's Deliverance. Prevent all... <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, Deliverance. <laughs> Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. But most importantly... Populate. <laughs> <laughs> so I will get another goat token. Unfortunately. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, oh. Where's your defense? I'll play it first. <laughs> I'll get a tapped... Island and uh, Remy, you know, remember the oak we made? <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Right? Yeah. I'll pass the turn to you. Okay. Oh, sometimes you uh, just make jokes. <laughs> I'll untap my growing ranks so I can use it. Draw two. Oh, that's a pretty good card. 
Uh, I'll populate for growing ranks, so I'll get uh, a token and then one more for the Druid's Deliverance. Pay five for a coat of arms. What? Oh. Tapped. Each creature. <laughs> it is tapped. <laughs> Each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type with it. So, uh, so would you so say your <laughs> goats are armed now? I would say that this is a goat of arms. Yes. <laughs> uh, go to combat. Goat to combat. Goat to combat. Uh, Carl? <laughs> I have that coming, don't I? I think I might attack with some goats. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, plenty of, plenty of fun, but I think I have to attack, because I think I might have it if I attack. If you beat Yamin, mean, you don't have to figure out what's going on with his board. Well, I will attack Yamin. No, no, no! What? But, but, what? but <laughs> I'm also going to attack Carl with these three. Ah, this is the shared over. How big are they? Uh, they're plus 10, plus 10. Oh, this is a That's goat. a goat. That's a goat, yeah. I mean, I'll block three of them. Any fog, Carl? I'd, I'd join a new gate watch just with you or something. I guess we'll have to do that in our graves. Of I still want to be in the great watch. <laughs> <laughs> Good game. Good game. That was fun. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. I have no idea how I won that game. I, I think I just was a fly on the wall and nobody wanted to attack me because they thought, well, this guy is doing really terribly. And then everybody else kind of just, I think, damaged each other. And then I was, I was just left there. We're going to be back. We're phoenixes. Ah! 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 <laughs> Stop it. Ah! 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 Did you call for us or that's just what you do? That was my phoenix noise. Oh! Oh! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Yeah, you can actually, like when I die, you can make like a little flame in the